Hello! Today we're going to have a quick look around Out of Bounds in Philosopher's Stone PC game. First of all, I'll tell you how you can access Out of Bounds mode so you can have a look around too, see if you can find anything else fun, and if you do, feel free to comment below. Oh, by the way, if you haven't been able to get the game to run on modern Windows systems, I have a video all about that, so check that out too. I also do nostalgia reviews for old Harry Potter games and other old games from the 90s and 2000s, so subscribe if that sounds like your kind of thing. And like this video if you found it fun or useful. Love you. Okay, so if you want to access out of bounds mode in Philosopher's Stone, first of all, load up the game and go to a playable section of the game. I think it doesn't matter if you're in a cutscene or not, it should work. Simply type Harry debug mode on. It doesn't matter if Harry moves and there are no spaces and you don't have to press enter. Just try and type it reasonably quickly and it should work. Don't take all day. If it worked, the green debug mode text should appear in the top left corner of the screen. Ta-da! There are also already some certain cheats that you can carry out now, such as holding in space to fast forward through cutscenes, and pressing F8 to change the camera angle between a bunch of presets. However, to get into free-flying ghost mode, there are a couple more steps. Next, you need to press tab to bring up a prompt in the bottom left corner, in the same green letters as before, and type in set space player pawn space b cheat enabled space true and press enter. Obviously don't type the word space in, just press the space bar. Thank you to YouTube channel The Silver Ketchup for this, as all the other written down advice has you type a slightly longer version, but this works and takes less time. He also goes through a bunch of other cheats, so check out his video for a longer explanation. Very useful indeed. However, to fly around through walls, press tab again, type ghost, press enter, and Harry should lift off from the ground slightly. If you haven't been able to get either of these to work, press the till key on American keyboards or the apostrophe at key on UK keyboards to bring up the full history of commands and make sure you're spelling everything right. Okay, so now you can make Harry fly around through walls, etc. However, the controls are a bit funny and I struggle to master them properly, but basically you move Harry forward and back the same, but left and right now do a kind of weird strafe, kind of really wide turn rather than the normal sharp turn Harry does in the game. The jump button makes Harry fly up and to go down, well, there is no button for that, but if you press tab and type walk, Harry will fall until he hits the ground and then walk around as normal. Feel free to repeat the ghost command to get back to being a ghost. Also, I don't recommend using the mouse much during this mode, as it does mess up the way Harry moves, so use it very sparingly. I managed to use it to fly slightly downwards, but it does mess up the camera, so be aware. If you exit the game back to the main menu when in debug mode, you also get to choose any of the levels to play from. But note that you have to repeat the set player pawn blah 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 and ghost steps each time you load a new level. If you do find yourself in trouble, it's often easier to just reload the level and start again than try and reorientate yourself. Be careful though, as if Harry tries walking in an area that has no floor, he will die and the game will force you to quit and open the game from scratch. I also had this when I tried ghost mode while learning a spell lol, so um, be careful! Okay, so now we know how to fly through walls. Let's have a look around, shall we? In the first level of the game, when Harry first enters Hogwarts, you see a bunch of students run out of a room. Now we can have a look inside, we can see it's just a room with a staircase, but you know, fun. I like how we can also see Fred and George at multiple times throughout the level, just waiting. I always wondered how they got around so quickly. In the flipendo challenge, in the pit underneath the bridge, it looks like there was meant to be an exit at some point, as it kind of goes up at the end, but then just closes off. I'm assuming originally it was possible to fall down there and you needed a way back out and then they just got rid of that. In the distance we can also find the Gryffindor common room due to the cutscene that happens at the end of the challenge where Ron, Hermione and Harry discuss the Gringotts break in. Pretty nice to have a look around. There's no staircase to get up but at the top there's a couple of rooms I assume leading off to the two dormitories. And we also find this little sealed off cube that has another Quirrell in. In the Quidditch training, there are a couple of bits of the castle that are kind of just floating, and we also find a couple of Harry models, one of which where he has a potion in his hand. Feeling a bit thirsty, is he? Skipping forward a bit, after the Wingardium Leviosa challenge, we get to have a look around the main corridors of Hogwarts again, where we have this lovely warm orange lit room that Harry just came from. We can also see Fred and George waiting behind the wall to burst out and give Harry a card. There's also a couple of rooms just on either end of the corridor where there's a couple of nice pictures. And there's also this little room in the distance with a few wall textures put on at weird angles. Outside the castle, in our first look at the grounds, if we go right to the edge, you can see at the floor there are these weird big tiles that have H's on. 
And actually going further out we can also see a little version with the skybox and the same floor texture on. We can also see Neville hiding waiting for when he has to come on later just before the lesson. And we also see Fred and George hiding beneath the ground. God I love the way they just pop out of the ground, it's so funny to me. I didn't see too much in the incendio challenge but there was the doxy just waiting in this little box. After the lesson, back in the grounds again. If we go back through the door where we just went, there's obviously nothing there anymore, just a short little bit of path. After chasing Malfoy to get Neville's rememberal back, we have a shortcut scene with Neville and McGonagall, but where did they go? Well, here's Neville again, and McGonagall hiding just a little bit behind. Heading to meet Hagrid, if we go inside his hut, there's just the stone interior, there's nothing actually inside. However, further in the distance, we can see the interior of the hut is waiting. Although interestingly, it hasn't got all of the props in it, and they must pop in for when there's the cutscene. I also managed walking around to get into a cutscene by accident and was just trapped. After the cutscene, when we enter the new level of the fire seeds, if we go back in Hagrid's hut, it's just black inside now and all the internal texture is gone. Also interestingly, the level doesn't actually loop back round, but instead when you reach the end of the level, there's a second Hagrid's hut waiting and you get teleported back. Obviously it looks better in the actual game than when I accidentally stumbled into the scene here. There's also just this floating fire for some reason, freaky. If we also go back the way we came, we have like a little bit of the landscape that was the same, but it doesn't go back very far. Moving on, before Harry's second defence against the dark arts class, we find Hermione just waiting behind this door in a little dark room all by herself, a loser, and we also see Snape waiting for his debut. I didn't really find anything in the Lumos challenge, but just like, wow, the colours. Stunning. Back out in the corridors of Hogwarts again, we see Fred and George waiting for when they appear behind the portrait. And in a dark room floating off in the distance, we also find a bunch of characters and a second portrait with the eye hole cut out. I couldn't find much in the dungeons, but I thought it was neat that there was two bloody barons floating about at the same time. I wouldn't really say it's a secret, but in the troll chase level we can now have a closer look at the exhibits, where we have a lot of creatures from throughout the game, including this little gnome that we can interact with, Flippendo! And there's also just a mini little troll, I don't think I noticed that when I was actually just playing it, but now, wow. Okay, heading on into the filch sneaking level, there's a bit where there's just three filches waiting, I just, I just found it quite funny, I'm not gonna lie. We can also now just go in that little tower staircase bit at the end of the level, and at the top we can actually walk around in the rafters a little bit. Going outside to where the cutscene is where they pick up Norbert is kind of cool, and we see the three towers, and the people flying are just flying the whole time. Going into the second sneak area, we can see the bit at the end with Fred and George is kind of split into three sections. We have the bit where they first go in the elevator, a big elevator shaft where we see them going down, and then there's the dungeon at the end where all the beans are held. I couldn't find the gnome though, it must be around here somewhere. The cutscenes just before the trio go off to find the Philosopher's Stone can all be accessed in the fluffy level, so we can go back to the library and have a look around where the characters are just standing there, and we also get the Gryffindor common room again. This time the common room itself is more fleshed out with a staircase that leads up to the dormitories. And we also have the portrait of the fat lady, or to be more precise, two portraits. I'm not quite sure why there's two, but it's cool that one of them is interactive and actually opens as the door as you get close. There's also this weird other little room where all the doors are blocked off by stone and there's this weird chandelier that I've not seen before. Going into the final level of the game where Harry faces off with Voldemort, there are actually multiple rooms, one of which has a couple of Harrys in, and another that is surrounded by fire and also has Dumbledore waiting for his appearance at the very end. So yeah, that's about all I could find. Nothing too crazy, but still, it's nice to just have a look around, because you know, Hogwarts does look pretty nice in this game. Comment below if you've seen anything fun, and feel free to watch my reviews for the games if you haven't done so already. I'll definitely be reviewing some more Harry Potter games in the future, so do subscribe, and feel free to follow me on all my social medias to keep up. I also like to stream here and on Twitch when I play new games, so feel free to follow me there as well if you want. I think that I knew that I knew there was a second one. Where's the- n ah! There was three! And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!